the pantry today. We should get most of the things finished except for the hardware. That'll come next week because it's on order. We're gonna <laughs> Always be something. We're going to be putting in countertops, trimming out the window, and a lot of fun stuff. We're going to add some custom touches to make these cabinets look even better. So we have the farmhouse corbels here. These are on the website, jamierayvintagehome.com. And we're going to paint them white. I don't think we're going to finish them like we did the last ones. So these are just the unfinished version, which you can order for your projects if you have something that you want to paint specific. These are the official farmhouse 1917 corbels, and we'll be using them all over in different projects. All the bathrooms are getting some. That's right. <laughs> so are we, Zeb, are you, are you going to put these flush against the wall, or are you going to put them up here? I guess they need to be flush against the wall, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna put it flush against the wall and the side and we'll see how I mount them. I might go from the side here and just toenail in because they've got such a wide thing right into the shiplap. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and spray these like we did the cabinets and then Zeb will attach them and then we'll touch them up wherever they need. This side is pretty narrow. We don't have as much gap like we do on this cabinet behind me. So I just cut this filler strip out of trim and um was pretty close it's pretty tight <laughs> but i'm gonna nail this in and then we'll do trim down below and this won't have a toe kick anymore it'll look like a built-in old time cabinet and no place for dust to die no place for dust to die i might do a little piece of trim here i think underneath. just some silicone will be we have to trim out the door yes. yeah we do have to trim out the door um so. should you trim out the door first because the trim on the door is gonna be wider than what you've got there no, I'm going to trim the door this way, just like right here flush, and then maybe do like some quarter round or something, because we won't have a lot of room because of the butcher block countertop. Oh, okay. Then I'm just going to put this right to the shiplap, and then we'll silicone it and cover up the nail hole. Or it'll shoot off and just put holes in the wall. Close, but no dice. More angle. There we go. A little bit of silicone to hide the seam. Next step is we've got these Farmhouse 1917. Again, you can buy them unfinished. We just sprayed them with DIY's beadboard to match the cabinets. And when we seal the cabinets, we'll just go ahead and seal those as well. All right, I need you to hold it like right there. Right there? All right. Are you gluing it too or just toenailing it in? I'm just gonna toenail it in from both sides and it'll stay really well. So I'm going to staple it right into the top of the corbel. Are you trimming oh. that out? Um, I might. Okay. We had a staple. Inevitably, something goes. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah. a lot sturdier now that I stapled those on the side. So whenever you're doing trim, silicone is your best friend. We'll hide all the unevenness and the weird things that happen in a house with a wall to a cabinet. This is the piece Jamie is most excited about. This Alder trim is... At the low, low price of $3.50 a foot. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pricey. But it's gonna get painted so it doesn't matter, but it'll be nice down there on this toe kick and that's gonna be awesome. I and am so excited to not have crap get underneath the cabinets. I don't understand the purpose of a toe kick, and I don't like it. It's them. so you can belly up to the counter and get real close. I never put my toes under there. Not one time. Mostly because there's garbage under it. <laughs> <laughs> there's not garbage. At our house. Just painting in the backyard with scrap wood. Hey, before the deck goes in, this is fair game. I've got this glued on here. This is what's going to be holding the trim to the toe kick because it's kind of hard to get a nail gun back in there that's so shallow and narrow, so we're just gonna glue it on. That'll hold it real nice and steady once it dries. And we're just gonna glue the blocks everywhere there's a seam, that way we know right where they're at so we can nail the trim to it. I'm already obsessed with the corbels. Cannot wait to get the trim in on this bottom part here and up top there. Trim work takes forever, Zeb was just saying. 
This always takes longer than you think it will. So I pulled all the old trim out of here and I've kind of leveled it off because, you know, my wall or the old wall or the shiplap or something wasn't straight. So I straightened it up as much as possible. And then we've got, I don't know the name of all the pieces, the sill. Window sill? Yep, the sill is here. And then I'm gonna do some trim up underneath and we're gonna case this whole thing out. That's gonna look bootimous. Hopefully, cross those little tiny fingers you got. Every now and then I check, make sure I can still get that window open. I'm gonna have a date with a razor blade in that window. Yeah, all the old paint jobs on it. Mostly the new overspray. And then we're gonna <laughs> re-glaze all the windows before, before winter hits. So because we can't just do regular trim and because the house, no part of it is straight or level, we decided to go with the shiplap line instead of the window line. So now I got to fix up over here a little bit. And let's be honest, who picked out the window trim design, you or me? It was me. It was Zeb. Uh, he may hate it by the time he's done. But we're going to do all the windows in the house like this and I won't hate it. It's going to look amazing. And it may take a hot minute for us to get the all of them finished. It's it's gonna be a fun craftsman style window treatment. But if once I see how you do it, then I can do it. Yeah, so you just kind of build it in layers here. And this is the very tippy most top piece. Let me go stand back real quick. All right. all right, so here's what this kind of looks like from this direction. This is craftsman style trim. We didn't want to go something super ornate because the house definitely has some rustic characteristics and we're going to keep with that thing. Yeah, I like simple and this works good for me. All we got to do is put the other piece under there. Sanding this by hand because the power's out. Yeah, we had a bad windstorm kick up and I was like, oh no, what's loose? What did I not connect right that the wind knocked it out? But the neighbor's power's out too, so it's not just us. I'm gonna grab the finishing block once I get the edges rounded off. We are gonna be using Sweet Pickens oil wax in a white finish. We're hoping to pickle the wood. This works over milk paint, chalk paint, any porous type paint, and raw wood. It's all natural, non-toxic, and I'm going to test it out on this little raw end here. And I'm pouring it out in this foam cup because I can't fit my brush in there. With this, you're just going to brush it on liberally, let it sit for 20 minutes, and then you wipe it back. It smells a little bit like castor oil, if you want my honest opinion. I remember drinking castor oil to try to bring on labor with Eliza. It didn't work nope. and you got super sick and now you can't even hardly stand the smell. Yup. All right, we're gonna let that sit for 20 minutes, then we'll wipe it back. If you do a couple coats of this, you will have a water resistant, watermark resistant finish that will last a good long time. And then if you have any problems over time, sand it down and put a little bit more oil wax on in a few years. It's barely, barely gonna change the color of this wood, which I kind of like because we like the blonde, light, natural wood. So we are gonna go ahead and brush this on, let it sit for 20 minutes, wipe it off, and pray that it doesn't start raining before we wipe it off. The clouds are gray. You wanna do long, even strokes with the grain of the wood. You know what the problem we have this is? Which is the front? That's the front? This is the front. Okay because there's like a bunch of sawdust down here that I don't want to get in my finish. After this, we just have to do shelves and make a door frame. And grout. Oh, and grout, yeah. And put trim on. <laughs> so I'm just going to do dark and decrepit on these and then I'll let it dry a little bit, rub it back. This has a built-in sealer, so dark and decrepit and done. And I don't need to do the sides, right? Because those are going to... Yep, those won't be visible. Just the front and the bottom will probably right. be seen. All right, so I'll do one side, let it dry, then I'll do the other side. They're making a mess all day. I need to get those boys over here. Okay. Get them cleaning. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. They're good little wood stackers.
right, so this one is done. What we're doing is we're coming back as soon as we rub the dark and decrepit on and wipe it right back off. Otherwise, it'll be way darker than we want it to be. On this side, I got my story stake out. We're doing 18 inches to the top. So that is flush right there. Give it a staple in the middle. Check it. Make sure it's mostly levelish. What story is your stick telling you? It's telling me 18 inches from the uh, counter height. Nice. But it'll actually be a little lower than that. Won't be quite as high as the other side because we don't have the countertops on. But that's okay. You don't want them to be too crazy high because then you got to get a stool to reach everything. Are you saying I'm short? I would have to get a stool to reach oh, stuff I just over there. That this side is a uh, keyboard. I kind of want these to go away. I've got my big board paint that the cabinet's painted with. There's a little bit of a gap, so is that gonna get silicone? Um, yeah. This whole thing is. <laughs> it's like there's not much gap on the bottom, but there is gap on the top. Well, that's because the wall, you know. It's not you. <laughs> I measured on the bottom, and apparently by the time you get up that high, four and a half inches up, it's not straight. Hey, you know what? Don't talk about my house that way. Okay, this is already painted, although this got put in before I painted it, so that's going to be fun. I'm going to It'll be really, fun. I'll have to be neat. And we're going to do the same trim in the kitchen, too. Also, you didn't see us do it, but this alder bleeds like crazy, so we had to bust out the salvation solution. Reach for it. Hey, where are you putting those nails? Wherever I want to. Here's the corner of truth. You start with this corner. Is it gonna line up? It'll line up enough. The drum. I got a piece of sandpaper that says that that'll zip right down. Oh, look at that. I want you to see my carpenter's corner really close. Now, when I start doing trim in the rest of the house, let's not get that close, okay? He named himself, it wasn't that far. All right, next up, shelves. Jamie sanded these super smooth so that when she's reaching up here to bake me delicious treats with all the canned goods that are up here, she won't get splinters. When I reach in the jar that has the pre-made cookies in it, I won't get splinters. Is that what you mean? Exactly. All right. So here are our uh, white oil waxed butcher block. I like it. So we used the white oil wax and it's just lightly white. It definitely needs a second coat, but I can do that tomorrow. You're supposed to wait 12 hours. You can add a second coat for more shine and durability. Stability. Stability. <laughs> I did it, I called it the stability. I'll attach them later, just some L brackets from the bottom. Yep, it'll be good. So because I'm short and I'm gonna sit at the window bench and I'm gonna notice things like the gap here, much to Zeb's dismay, we went ahead and filled this. We just put a block of wood on top of the corbel, and then Zeb, we, we construction adhesed the wood to the corbel, and then Zeb trimmed out the top. So we'll paint this and there won't be a weird like gap. It'll be right in here. Ta-da! Only to my dismay because in reality, I would have never seen that. But it looks so good. We got the Jamie cam. Okay, we've got vinyl tile grout. It's pre-mixed saddle gray and it is special formulated for this vinyl tile. What, uh, what, what brand on this tile again? It's upside down because the box is heavy but it's style selections and it's 1345075 from Lowe's. So style selections 1345075. Just look it up at Lowe's. Okay so you just want you don't want to use a ton of grout and you want to keep it off the baseboards if possible. We're going with gray grout for a few reasons. One, for contrast. Two, because then I don't have to worry about having white grout. It says this resists stains. Like, I don't think it needs to be sealed because it's vinyl. Did we seal the grout in the other bathroom? 
Yeah, we did. We, I know I we sealed, sealed the tile. I sealed the tile and everything. Oh, okay. I, no, we sealed the tile before we sealed the ground. So I'm going to just kind of smear this on, and then I'll come back and wipe it off before I get too far, because you don't want it drying on your vinyl. I'm really glad we went with the big tile, because we have less to grout. Yep, we were going to go with a hexagon style. But they didn't was, have it. But they were out of stock, thank goodness. And this style, like the rectangle, looks good with all the straight lines we have going on. I mean, the world may never know if the hex would have looked better, but I don't really care at 12 o'clock at night. Yeah, we're back We're back here late again. All right, I'm going to get the sponge. The trick is like push hard on the tile, not like in the grout hole. We got a ton done in here today, but the door is still not hung. That's the one thing that didn't happen. I may have added a few extra things to the list, some extra trim situations. We got a bench that you'll see here in a second. Verdict's still out on whether or not the bench is going to stay. Make sure you hit up. Make sure. Make sure you hit up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products we use to transform this pantry. Hit up Jamie Ray Vintage Home for all of your home decor and clothes. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. And next week, stay tuned because we're gonna put the hardware in and all the decorations. That's when the good stuff happens. And the door. Don't forget the door. I can't believe that this is stick on peel and stick vinyl 